Hey guys, Michael Furlonger here for another, what I've been calling Michael and the Devil. It should more or less be like the Bible and the Devil. I've been just talking about how we use scripture to contradict scripture. So in one of the videos I talked about where Paul's warning that the devil himself masquerades as an angel of light. Uh, anyway, a lot of different things. You can check them all out. There's only like five videos, five or six videos. Anyway, in the last video, I talked about abortion. I want to talk about some two hot topic issues. And one of the first one I talked about was abortion. That um, that we should be both loving loving and merciful on one side. But we cannot say that what the scripture says is flawed, is, is not true. So, so when a, a woman is surprisingly pregnant... Is unplanned pregnancy, let's say that. Um, we need to be comforting and loving and merciful on one side. But if she says, well, well what does the Bible say? We can't just say, well, let's just ignore the Bible and, and let's just do what you want to do. Kind of thing. So, so I shared, shared that and shared various scriptures. Now, on the topic of homosexuality, another hot button issue. I shared a video uh, last week on Facebook that said, it was uh, Frank Turk, he's a Christian apologist. He said, he's talking um, about, I don't know what the point of this conference was, but anyway, the reason I shared the video was because he said how women civilize men. And I thought that was actually really interesting and very accurate. But at the beginning of the video, he's talking about, he quotes um, a man in 1990s who was in the homosexual lifestyle and says that the goal of legalizing um, homosexual marriage is not about love, it's about becoming equal with with heterosexual marriage. So I shared that for the initial purpose I shared, but the other person said she couldn't even watch all of it, and she gave me a long list of why she doesn't like how people read scripture, how they, we nitpick, and Old Testament stuff. So I shared with her, behind each one of her comments, I said, well, thank you for sharing, thank you for listening. Um, but I'm not nitpicking. There are so, and I shared the verses in the New Testament where it talks about homosexuality. So it's not just this Old Testament thing. It's also in the New Testament. So, so I shared that with her. So, so I'm just going to read what one of the things that Jesus talks about. Uh, in this Matthew 19, Pharisees are asking, uh, Jesus, what's up with divorce? Uh, why did Moses allow for divorce? Uh, verse, so 19, verse 4. Haven't you read, he, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason a man will, <clears throat> will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Um, going on, uh, uh, Jesus is saying that it's better not to be married. And no, the, actually the disciple says, if this is the situation between a husband and a wife, it is better not to be married. And verse 11, Jesus replied, not every, everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. For some are eunuchs. Now, a eunuch is a man who um, has been uh, snipped. Now, not like a vasectomy, who can still, but has been permanently removed of any sexual desire. So, uh, now the reason that they would do this was for um, for protection of... Uh, the royal family, so that he doesn't, you know, do nothing with the queen, um, or, yeah, that's the main reason, good reason, I think they also did it for, uh, so that they could sing in the choir, reach those high notes, anyway, um, uh, for this, for some are eunuchs, because they were born that way, others were made that way by men, and others have renounced marriage because of the kingdom of God, the one who can accept this should accept it. So, so Jesus one he says that marriage is between a man and a woman. This is not. He goes back to Old Testament, but if Jesus said in the New Testament, he is 
sovereign over my political views, over my feelings. So that's just all I shared with uh, that friend on social media. Oh, not all I shared. There's a lot of verses. If you go to uh, online um, concordance, I go to BibleGateway.com and just search the word sexual, and you get a big long list of times in the Bible where it uses that word. And uh, you can look up in the, click on the New Testament and just see a whole bunch of things where it talks about homosexuality. Uh, Romans 1, uh, verse... Uh, verse 24 Therefore God gave them over to the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the de de degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. Verse 26 Because of this God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Uh, men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. And uh, it's in 1 Timothy 1.10 um, where Paul's talking about the law, that the law is not for the righteous, for but for the unrighteous, the sinful, the the impure and those who practice practice homosexuality. Nowhere in my Bible does it say, you know, well, you know, Bob the homosexual or whatever, right? Like it is a sin like every other sin. My sexual sins, heterosexual, homosexual, they are sins. Uh, James says that uh, if you break one law, you are a lawbreaker. You have broken all the laws. So. So I don't want us as Christians to act all, you know, high and mighty on one side, say, well, at least I'm not like them, and, and hateful. No, we, again, just as with the abortion topic, we need to be grace, gracious, graceful, and loving, and considerate on one side, but we cannot say that the scriptures are wrong on, on the other side. I, I think of the example of like if a, if a young man, a, a little boy who's just reaching puberty, I guess, and comes up to me and says, you know, Michael, I've been going to church with my family my whole life, but uh, past week I was in gym class with the other boys and, and whatever, right? I, I don't want to go to hell, but, but I've been told that the Bible hates me, that the Bible hates. And... And that saddens me because one, the Bible does not say that. It's, so, you know, we need to be, again, know that balance. Um, John, the, uh, in the Gospel of John, it said that Jesus balanced grace and truth, and I think we need to balance that as well. So, anyway, so that's all I'm going to say on uh, on this topic in the coming. Uh, weeks, I'm going to start a whole new uh, series. Uh, you don't want to miss that. It's going to be the Bible against the Bible. It's, it's going to be good. Anyway, um, tell me what you think. Leave a comment below, and I will talk to you guys later. All right? Have a good day. Bye now. Hey, guys. I'm, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just want to share my book. Uh, it's God, the Master of Sin, and Satan, the Beautiful. It's a unique uh, name. But I'm a unique person, so there we go. Uh, I talk about some of the things that I've talked about in the video. Some stuff I, I don't talk about that you get a special view in the video, but I'd love for you to check out the link below, uh, go to the website, and, and get yourself a copy. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys later, alright? Have a good day. Bye now.